Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I'm Naja Atutijani. Remember, this broadcast is being streamed live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media handles displayed on the screen. We begin with a swearing-in ceremony, and if you guessed justice, Ulukayode Ariwala has been formally sworn in, you guessed right, as he has been sworn in as the substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari performed this ceremony in fulfillment of the provisions of Section 231, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. State House Correspondent Adam Usambo has the details. That I will preserve, protect, and defend the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. Justice Olukayade Ariola takes oath of office before President Muhammad Buhari as the 18th Chief Justice of Nigeria. Born over 60 years ago in Isheyin, Oyo State, Justice Ariola backed his Bachelor of Laws degree in 1980 from the then University of Ife called to the Nigerian bar and got enrolled at the Supreme Court as a solicitor and advocate in July 1981. The new CJN has been on the bench of the nation's apex court for nearly 11 years, having been appointed in November 2011. Before his elevation to the Supreme Court, Justice Ariola, a fellow of the International Desperate Resolution Institute, served as Justice of the Court of Appeal in Kaduna, Inugu and Lagos divisions. He was appointed acting Chief Justice of Nigeria in June this year. I believe the law that had taken me this far will continue to support me to do the best for Nigerians. I shall not let down Nigerians because with the support of my brother justices, I can see all of them are here with me as they were when I was sworn in in acting capacity, with their support, we shall not fail Nigerians. We are computerizing already the Supreme Court and all other courts of records, so that uh, the, the delay in filing cases will become a thing of the past. You are coming on board close to our election year. The judiciary will be very busy. What is your message to politicians? Politicians should allow the judiciary to function. You know, law is not static. And that's why you have seen that this, the, the National Assembly had continued to amend the laws. And it is the law that the courts apply to the facts available. We shall continue to do justice if only Nigerians will allow us to perform and function without any pressure. Governors of OU and on those states, as well as a number of justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, were on hand to show solidarity. He is a very disciplined person. He is a team player and he is an erudite person. These three adjectives qualify him. So what do Nigerians expect from him? A disciplined judiciary, a selfless judiciary, and a courageous judiciary. Well, the message from Oyo is uh, we are really, really happy. One of our own is now the Chief uh, Justice of uh, Nigeria, and uh, uh, the good people of Oyo State were thankful to uh, Mr. President for seeing the process through. It's been uh, quite uh, a while when this uh, type of opportunity uh, has uh, knocked on our door. So we uh, we counted ourselves uh, quite uh, uh, lucky and we look forward to 
supporting him to contribute uh, to uh, the development uh, of the uh, judiciary in Nigeria. The new CJN, Justice Oluka Ede Ariola, succeeded Justice Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad, who resigned his appointment on held ground. From the State House, Adam Sambu, NTA News. Well, congratulations to the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ulukayode Ariwola, and the good people of Oyo State, where I served in 2010. Now, the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, says the National Assembly will pass the 2023 Appropriation Bill in December this year. Senator Lawan stated this at a reception in honor of the National Award of Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger conferred on him and Commander Order of the Niger on 10 other senators, Ignatius Mpo reports. Senators, staff and well-wishers of President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, were at his residence to congratulate him and other awardees for the national honor. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, observed that every senator in the 9th National Assembly deserves the award. He emphasized that every senator exhibited high sense of commitment in their interventions and that the national award will further spur them to do more, especially with the 2023 budget in the legislative meal. Like we did before the previous three sessions, we are going to pass the budget by the grace of God before the end of December. Some senators noted that the honor done to President of the Senate is deserving and a product of commitment to nation building. If any person will claim success in this democratic dispensation, I believe we are one of them. This is the first time you find about 12 senators getting this kind of national honor to my colleagues this award to just a few of us is for all of us our colleagues in the nine senate worked so hard senator lawan and 11 other senators received different categories of national honors which they dedicated to the ninth senate ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. Now the Senate has commenced debate on the general principles of the 2023 Appropriation Bill. The lead debate by the majority leader of the Senate explains that the current federal government's debt level is still within sustainable limits and that the loans are used to finance critical projects such as the various rail projects, power sector reform projects and health facilities and the senators re-emphasize the need for revenue monitoring so as to check leakages. The legislators are bothered that in years when there was embargo on employment in Nigeria, recurrent expenditure continued to increase astronomically and therefore they are calling for a review of the overhead of ministries, departments and agencies of government. And the Senate is again urging ministries, departments and government agencies to explore all avenues to improve their internally generated revenue. This was during an oversight of agencies in Lagos by its Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development, Mobola Jimoribirin reports. Government agencies under the purview of the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development in the southern part of the country converge on the Nigerian Institute for Oceanography and Marine Research, Lagos, to present their scorecards within the last two years. We've been training people from West Africa on our ship which you bought for us. That's the ship. It's the only one in the country now. The amount remitted for 2020 and 2021 is 9.2 for the year 2021 we generated 29.2 million and uh, we remitted 8.6 million one common thing observed by the committee within the agencies is low revenue generation among other concerns i think you have to do more on this uh, idea for you to generate only 21 million I think it's, uh, it's, it's just disappointing. Some of these projects, they just cut the government money out. By the time they will come for the budget defense, they will ensure that the required balances of the remittances are made. The committee also visited the Federal College of Fisheries and Marine Technology to assess progress there with a promise to give it more legislative support. Mobolaji, 
Mori Berry, NTA News. Members of the House of Representatives have commended budget implementation timelines in the last seven years of the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, leading the opening the debate on the fiscal proposal for 2023. Members highlight efforts of the federal government on infrastructure and social development, as well as tackling insecurity through timely release of budgets. Other contributions are the prospects and challenges of the 2023 budget estimate and the current realities such as crude oil theft, debt servicing, continuation of subsidy regime, debt to GDP ratio and revenue leakages among others. The House hopes to conclude debate on the 2023 budget this week and refer document to Committee on Appropriation for further legislative action as it works to sustain the January to December budget circle. Let's now join Hingino in our Lagos Network Center for more on Nationwide. Hello, Hingino. Hello, Naja, and welcome to Lagos. Determined to live up to expectations, the Nigerian Army 81 Division has commenced its fourth quarter 2022 Veteran Affairs Workshop. Annie Daniels reports that the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, represented, flagged off the workshop in Lagos. This workshop with the theme, harnessing the potential of Nigerian Army veterans in the community-based security, the Chief of Army Staff says will focus on the importance of Nigerian Army veterans whose wealth of knowledge is still needed and appreciated, bearing in mind their enduring roles in community security, especially at this critical time when Nigeria is faced with diverse but surmountable security challenges. It's a good participant capacity to effectively support my vision, which is to build a professional Nigerian army ready to accomplish assigned missions within a joint environment in defense of Nigeria. The Nigerian army is optimistic the workshop will provide a platform for continuing synergy with these veterans and those elsewhere. Nigeria has 774 local governments nationwide and in all these local governments I dare say that we have not less than a hundred retirees from the Nigerian Armed Forces in each and every one of these uh, local governments. My question is, what are they doing for the security of Nigeria? Many of us are participating in many operations, we are participating in expeditions, and we can put down to bear to help the country to show their security. They have the unique eyes to see things and be able to communicate to us that are still wearing the uniform what they are seeing and I believe that uh, information is key. It is expected that at the end of this workshop participants would have gained more knowledge and expertise to serve as a springboard for higher grounds. In Lagos, Annie Daniels. NTA News. Still talking security, leveraging regional cooperation and other joint protocols in protecting the Gulf of Guinea, the Nigerian Navy is certain that the era where piracy and other maritime crime hinder trade along the international water is over. Chief of the Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Awal Gambo, stated this in a message to flag off ceremony of exercise Grand African Nemo 2022 in Lagos. Adinita reports that the Western Naval Command of the Nigerian Navy is hosting the exercise. This is started in 2018. Exercise Grand African Nemo has served as a platform to drive synergy among navies in the Gulf of Guinea towards promoting maritime safety and international trade across the channel. As the host, the Western Naval Command is pulling all the stops to sustain adequate presence of the Nigerian Navy in the exercise. Along with three other ships, two helicopters, one gunboat, and other maritime domain security assets. NNS Centenary is taken to the sea to join up with other navies coming from different parts of the world for better patrol of the five zones transiting through the Gulf of Guinea.
while performing the flag of ceremony, Chief of the Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Aura Gambo, who was represented by the Flag Officer Commanding Western Naval Command, says the Gulf of Guinea, with its enormous resources, is a strategic sea route, and protecting it is a shared responsibility in which Nigeria must play a lead role. Set to last for five days, exercise Grand African Nemo, he says, is in furtherance of the Yaoundé Accord, designed to improve synergy through joint operations and intelligence sharing among Gulf of Guinea navies. It is my hope that the exercise will positively impact on Nigerian Navy's readiness for combat operation and expose other vital research agencies to the benefits of interagency cooperation and international collaboration. In March 2022, the International Maritime Organization delisted Nigeria from the rank of countries plagued by sea piracy, a feat achieved through exercises such as Grand African Nemo and other interventions by the Nigerian Navy. In Lagos, Adini Itaiwo, NTN News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Comfort IM is standing by in Enugu for the next set of reports, but that will be after this break. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to Enugu Network Center. Farmlands and property worth millions of Naira have been lost to flood at Ogurugu Uzuwani, local government area of Enugu State. The displaced communities in the area and their neighbors from Kogi and Anambra State are calling for help from the relevant authorities. Susan Eze has the report. And other surrounding communities in Uzuwan, a local government area of Enugu State, have become perpetual victims of flood disasters any year it occurs. Houses, farmlands, and roads are washed away while the people get displaced. A community leader, Chief Simon Mwabweze, tells of the people's ordeal as the flood comes ravaging the land again. I didn't want about 2,000 houses. About 8,000 are homeless. Uh, our road in the community is not part of the state. Then you overflow it. No vehicle can come in, no vehicle can go out. As the people in Ogurugu contend with the current situation, they are also playing host to fleeing victims of the same flood from the neighboring Kogi and Anambra states. We have other community, we have other community, we have a lake community, all have come down to Ogugu community because of the flood devastation. Though the people admit that officials of the Enugu State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, have come on an assessment visit, their hope is that help would come from the federal and state authorities sooner than later. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. As the world marked International Day of the Girl Child, Anglican Archbishop of Enugu Ecclesiastical Province and Bishop of Enugu has admonished parents to inculcate good morals in their children, especially the girl child, to avoid being lured into acts capable of jeopardizing their future. The report. National Day of the Girl Child offers an opportunity to empower girls and also honor the girl child. In commemoration of the 2022 annual event, different secondary schools in Enugu State gathered at the Cathedral Church of the Good Shepherd to sensitize the public on the need to protect the rights of the girl child. Most Reverend Emmanuel Chukuma re-emphasized the need to protect and uphold the right of the girl child and equally encouraged the students to be useful to themselves and have a clean court plan for a better tomorrow. We must partner with the international community to make sure that we make sure that we gather these girls from various schools and begin to enlighten them about how to become responsible, disciplined and uh, progressive girls. I've always emphasized on discipline. Discipline towards your body, your health, your passion, and most importantly, discipline with your time. You know, when you get these four things right, you can hardly go wrong. Our advocacy goes beyond 
just giving them education and shelter, but also protecting them from this harsh environment. Statistics by NAPTIP shows that over 40% of persons, both male and female, are being sexually exploited through the internet across the country. The theme for 2022 International Day of the Girl Child is Our Time is Now, Our Right, Our Future. And that's the contribution from Enugu is back to Naja in Abuja for more reports on Nationwide. Thank you, Comfort. Indeed, our time is now. And let's visit Burundi, where a high-level, a high-powered forum of African First Ladies and Women Leaders is taking place. It is also a place where the Future Assured program of the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, aimed at promoting the general well-being of women and children, is becoming a model in Africa through the adoption of its successful strategies by the First Lady of Burundi, Angeline Indaishmiye, towards improving the health and nutrition of women, children and adolescents in Burundi. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports. The high-level forum of women leaders cutting across all aspects of human endeavor from across the continent have converged on Bujumbura under the invitation of the Burundian First Lady Angelina Ndaishimi, who is the Vice President of the Africa First Lady's Peace Mission with the aim of brainstorming and sharing ideas and experiences towards addressing challenges affecting women and children in Africa. Discussions centered on the need to accelerate all effort towards the reduction of maternal, neonatal, infant, morbidity and mortality. Having taken into consideration the contributions of the Nigeria's First Lady towards the promotion of the general well-being of women and children through the Future Assured Program, the First Lady of the Republic of Burundi reaffirmed to replicate similar exercise in Burundi to particularly improve the health and nutrition of school-aged children. The president of the Africa First Ladies Peace Mission explained that with the collaboration of all the relevant stakeholders and the support of the leaders, the interventions of the First Ladies Peace Mission will know no bound in their quest towards maintaining a healthier, secured, peaceful and prosperous Africa, particularly on issues affecting women and children. We try to partner with developing, with developmental partners. Recently, the First Lady's office was able to get some therapeutic meals in partnership with the UNICEF. So that was a drive that our country did in reducing malnutrition. And we took it round. You can imagine we have about 774 local governments, so it's quite large. How to improve their nutrition, how to make them healthy, you know, how to promote our local products that will, at the end of the day, contribute to the development of the generality of the community. The First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, and her counterpart, the Burundian First Lady, Angelina Ndajime, reaffirmed their determination to open other windows of opportunity, particularly the education of a girl child for the mutual benefit of the two countries. In Bujumbura, Burundi, Aliu Kabir, NTA News. And from Burundi, we head to Washington, D.C. in the United States, where the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, says it is heartwarming to see the United States joining the League of Nations, which have embraced morality, to return stolen cultural, prop cultural artifacts which belong to Nigeria. The minister stated this in Washington, D.C. during the signing of a final repatriation agreement of the Benin bronzes from the United States. Anthony Forsen reports. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed, while describing the artifacts as intrinsic to the culture that produced them, the people ought not to be denied of works of their forebearers. So it is in the light of this, therefore, the government and people of Nigeria remains grateful for the cooperation given by the U.S. With this agreement, Lai Mohamed maintained that it will solidify the shared commitment to combat looting and trafficking of precious cultural property. The world has now moved away from strict sense legality to issue of morality and that it is 
not about how you came into possession of these items that matters. For the fact that they remain looted, they remain stolen, and the right thing to do is to return them to where they belong. And uh, I hope that the British Museum and other museums will borrow a bit from what has happened today and what has also happened in uh, Germany to please, you know, move away from legislation and uh, statutes on why they will not return. Expressing gratitude to the boards of trustees of Smithsonian Museum of African Arts, the National Gallery of Arts, and the Rhode Island School of Design for their roles that led to this ceremony. The agreement was signed by the Director General National Commission for Museums and Monuments for Nigeria, while Loni Bunch signed for the U.S. It's a really great moment for us to, as a testimony that repatriation is the right thing to do. Uh, museums outside of Nigeria should understand that uh, returning of objects that are illegally taken uh, out of Nigeria uh, is something that they need to agree to, to return them. The Oba of Benin was represented at the ceremony by Prince Abatisi Erediawa. Others also present include Mokhtar Ibrahim Bashir, Ambassador and Deputy Chief of Mission, Nigeria Embassy in Washington. Nigeria is taking delivery of 21 artifacts from Smithsonian and one each from the Gallery of Arts and Rhode Island School of Design. In Washington, D.C., Anthony Forson, NTA News. Still on diplomatic ties, the curtains have been drawn on the Nigeria-Egypt trade conference in Cairo with a commitment from both countries to work on increasing volume of trade and cooperation. Benny Adams reports that the Minister of State Works and Housing, Ibrahim El Yaqub, is in talks with some of Egypt's giant construction companies to invest in Nigeria's infrastructure drive. It is a government-to-business and business-to-business -business session. From talk to work, it is a handshake that hopes to revolutionize construction in Nigeria. We have hills, we have rivers. I'm sure you can make wonders in Abu. Tariq El Gamal and Ahmed Afifi are two of three famous men turning the desert in Cairo into smart cities. Construction is the main game for both, while agriculture is sidekick for Afifi. This is the attraction for Nigeria, says Ibrahim El Yaqub, Minister of State Works and Housing. Partnering with Egyptians who can not only invest in Nigeria, but you can actually go and get land and yeah. produce on that land and bring it to, to Egypt, to Egypt yes. and to other places. I think it's very good, you know, inshallah. inshallah. Just like Ahmed Afifi in Egypt, Adeumi Osagi is building a smart city in Lagos, Nigeria. And her visit to Egypt, like other countries around the world, is to see and make a difference. The last two, three months we've been able to attract an investment from the uh, Middle East to the tune of $36 billion. In all, organizers of the conference say it was a success. A lot of people will start coming to Nigeria and a lot of Nigerians will start coming to Egypt. The conference did not close without selling Nigeria's unique creativity to the world. From Almasa, one of Cairo's new smart cities, I am Benny Adams, NTA News. Meanwhile, partnership between government regulatory bodies and the private sector is key in closing the digital connectivity divide in Africa and the world at large, where up to 35%, that's 2.9 billion people, are digitally unconnected. This is the view of Nigeria's prime, the Nigeria's Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, rather, Professor Isa Ali Pantani, at a summit on digital inclusion at the ongoing JITEX Global 2022 in Dubai, where ICT correspondent Chindima Undubisi tells us that Nigeria is receiving accolades. As it stands, the world's population, estimated to hit more than 8 billion before the year runs out, has about 5.1 billion of its population digitally connected. Discussions here are on deploying measures to close existing digital divide. A 
improve inclusion and attain digital maturity. Initiatives of the federal government in an attempt to close the digital divide when it comes to digital skills. We have so many initiatives like virtual academies, training for women, training for children, training for people with disabilities, catch them young. When it comes to uh, internet connectivity, we also have many initiatives like NICTIP, National Information and Communications Technology Infrastructure Backboard, which is another huge project and is going to be one of the major legacies of President Muhammad Buhari's administration. NCC is being requested from time to time to use what they call roll-out obligation to direct uh, mobile network operators on areas to provide broadband connectivity in Nigeria. The passion of Nigeria's digital economy sector's helmsman, Professor Isa Ali Panjami, in creating a viable digital economy which has made the sector the fastest growing and on track to becoming a leading digital technology hub in Africa has not gone unnoticed globally. He was honored with the Visionary Leadership Award by the Dubai World Trade Center. Nigeria is the only country among 100 other attendees at the exhibition to have received such an award. From Dubai, Tim Dema Dubisi, NTA News. And we're not leaving Dubai yet as Nigeria has signed a memorandum of understanding with Microsoft Nigeria, which will see 5 million Nigerians gain digital skills as the country repositions to meet the technological skills gap predicted for 2030. ICT correspondent Chimdima Undubisi again reports that this was made known at the Gulf Information Technology Exhibition, JITEX, taking place in Dubai, where the Minister of Communication Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Ali Pantami, signed the MOU on behalf of the federal government, while Mr. Dean Yusuf signed for Microsoft. Under this deal, categorized into 10 initiatives, 1 million job seekers will receive industry in demand training, 2 million digital technology business enterprises, while 20,000 will be employed by Microsoft Nigeria. Other trainings are on data and artificial intelligence, AI, code applications and web development while some youths will gain ex expertise on Microsoft Cloud and technology. Professor Pantami says the MOU takes effect immediately. It's now time to join Saidia in Sokwato for an update from that zone. It's nice to see you Saidia. See you too Najaatu. The Independent Electoral Commission, INEX, says the newly introduced BVAS technology will further improve on the Commission's mandate to deliver a credible exercise across the country. The head voter education, Mohammed Abani Takai, disclosed this at a meeting convened for candidates of the All Progressive Congress to highlight the guidelines and rules on tackling financing and general electioneering process and campaign activities of parties held at APC Secretariat. Belato Abdullahi has more. In attendance at the meeting were the party's governorship candidate, Ahmed Aliou Sakwato, and other party candidates for the various elective positions across the state. Head Voter Education INEC Abani Take said, candidates and the party's spending limits have been spelled out by the commission adding that INEC will not spare anyone who violates its guidelines and rules which will be subject to fines or imprisonment. He urged politicians to conduct and respect themselves in accordance with the guiding rules and regulations. No abusive derogatory language and they should promote politics of ideology, not sentiments. We have a mechanism put in place so that we can track all this expenditure. State APC Chairman Isa Sadek Achida commended the effort of INEC for working toward improving the electoral process for the country. He assured the Commission that APC in the state will not allow its supporters to perpetrate any act of violence. Whatever rules is there, we are going to follow them, 100%. Similar exercise would be extended by the Commission to other political parties in the state. In Sakwato, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. In commemoration of 2022 International Girls' Child 
civil society organizations in Sokoto have advocated for equal rights to education for girls with special needs. This was thrown up at two separate events to support the education of girls with special needs in Sokoto. Sheikh Muhammad Dati reports. This year commemorates the 10th anniversary of the International Day of the Girl Child, which began in 2012. In the last 10 years, there had been increased attention to issues that matter to girls amongst governments, policymakers, the general public, and more opportunities for girls to have their voices heard on the global stage. Yet, investments in girls' rights, especially those with special needs, remain limited, and these girls continue to confront a myriad of challenges in fulfilling their potentials. This prompted Nagari Disability Center, a non-governmental organization in Sokoto, to organize an event to support the girl child with special needs at Abdulashid Adisaraji Special School in Sokoto with educational materials to ease their learning process. Our foresight of uh, picking the girls at this school and see how we can support them so that it can ease um, the economic spendings from their family and also enable the children to participate fully uh, in their classes, most especially to even see that they are being celebrated. Speakers had expressed concern and the need for more investment in education of children with special needs. In our development, advocacy for women and girls with disability initiative, which is an organization seeking for the protection of the rights of people with special needs, also extended similar gesture at Gaman Girls Secondary School at Killa. The initiative emphasized the need for more efforts in supporting the education and the rights of girls with special needs. The initiative donated sanitary parts to the students. International Day of the Girl Child is observed on October 11th every year by the United Nations. The day focuses attention on the need to address the challenges the girl child faces and to promote girls' empowerment and the fulfillment of their rights. In Sokoto, Sheo Muhammad Dekti, NTA News. And that's it from this end. More news on Nationwide continues after this break from Medupri. Thanks for staying tuned on nationwide up to this moment and this is my degree network center. Let's move on now. The Lost State Government is sustaining every momentum at its disposal in line with its unwavering determination of closing the series of gaps experienced in the education sector due to over a decade-long Boko Haram crisis, as well as ensure public secondary school graduates further their education. It is on this premise that it presented a check of 337 million 92,485 Naira to the National Examinations Council, NACO, for timely release of 2022 SSCE results through the Ministry of Education. Here are more details of the story. The official presentation of check of 337 million 92,485 Naira to NACO by Borno State Government it's not just for candidates who sat for the 2022 National Examinations Council to access their results, but a deliberate attempt by the administration of Professor Babagana Umara to settle its financial obligations. While announcing that out of the over 300 million naira disbursed for the payment of this year's NACO fees, Commissioner for Education, Engineer Lon Abu Kilbi, explained that 297 million 64,810 Naira is for the settlement of state and local government's share, which is a subsidy of 75% of the examination fees for 21,827 students studying in public schools across Borno. More than half our population are internally displaced people. More than three quarters of the number of these students that the government is paying for are from the local governments. So you don't expect an IDP to be able to afford SSC examinations. That is why the government subsidizes it by 75%. Engineer Wakili added that the present administration in the state had paid NACO 994 million 756,025 Naira from 2019 to date 
for the conduct of senior secondary school certificate examination. The no state coordinator of NACO, Ali Buckman Jajeri, described the Vulum administration as highly responsive towards the education sector in Bono and applauded the education commissioner for effective coordination from that now to tell you that Borno is likely to rise again much bigger and stronger for the overall growth of the nation. Director General, National Orientation Agency, NOAA, represented by Borno State Director of the organization, Ambassador Shatima Jafar Imam, made this statement shortly after presenting an Integrity Club Congratulatory Certificate and 20,000 Naira to Government Girls College, Niduguri, for emerging first position in an Integrity Club competition held in the state. Omar Kirawa will now bring us more details. The quest for integrity and sustainable development of the younger generation in the once insurgency ravaged Borno state in the northeast sub region of Nigeria is what necessitated the reactivation of Integrity Club, an initiative of the National Orientation Agency, NOAA, across schools within the state. The management of NOAA, led by representative of the Director General of the Agency, Ambassador Shakima Jafar Imam, who are at Government Girls College Meduguri to honor the school for imagining the state's first place winner in the Integrity Club's national video competition. What that we are doing now is nothing but the building that we need to know. So, we've seen this in the and today we're going to be able to know who are not there. Ambassador Shetima Jafar and the senior special advisor to Governor Zulum on Education, Tijani Lewan, while commending the school for what they described as outstanding performance during the competition, maintained that the exercise is targeted at instilling national core values among the younger generation for a better Nigeria. Our state government has given all the necessary support that it takes in order to say that integrity club is well accepted and trench in all schools. Principal of GGC Meduguri, Haji Ayane Fagazali, noted that emerging first out of the 15 contending schools across Borno State is a development that will be sustained with government's continued support. In Meduguri, Umuri Kirawa, NTA News. And those are the latest stories at this time from me degree is now back to you in abuja for more reports for us this evening welcome back to our abuja studios and thank you abubakar the nigerian military is urging the public particularly those at the grassroots in the northeast to fully support the ongoing counterinsurgency operations to hasten the elimination of remnants of terrorists in the region. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that this is the focus of a workshop organized by the Nigerian Army Resource Center with support from the Office of the National Security Advisor. The counter-insurgency operations in Nigeria continue to take different dimensions. Troops are constantly on the offensive, while the implementation of non-kinetic strategies upscaled to win the hearts and minds of the people in the area. What we are trying to do is to let all Nigerians be part of the security architecture. Nigerians can only be secured through them. It is not only the responsibility of the military or other security agents to perform, but everybody has a role to play. Nigerians must claim ownership of our counter-insurgency operations. It is about us as a citizen. It's not about the emphasis fighting bandits or terrorists. It's about the whole of Nigeria as a people. The Counter-Terrorism Center at the Office of the National Security Advisor is responsible for coordinating the operation. It is implementing the National Security Strategy, a document that proposes an inclusive effort. This threat outlook therefore demands a synergy of effort involving stakeholders across government and citizens in the whole of government and the whole of society approaches to ensuring national security. Records from the defense headquarters show that from September 2022 to date, more than 90,000 terrorists and their families have surrendered to troops to complement the military's efforts in the decades long fight against insurgency. The public is enjoined to regularly provide intelligence report to enhance proactive operations. From the Nigerian Army Resource Center in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News.
Now, the lingering industrial action embarked on by the Academic Staff Union of Universities is getting way too much, but the emergence of new bodies is likely to bring circuses key players in the nation's education sector, who were on NTA's flagship program, Tuesday Live. Abubakar Akwanga reports. Strike by academic community of Nigerian universities has been on for a long while now, old enough to bat a child, but with 50-50 chances of survival. This perilous expression best fit the attempt to mother the future of aspiring generations who believed the four- and five-year study duration in Nigerian university was achievable. We all have, you know, one destiny for this country, which is that this country must develop. You cannot develop this country the way we are going. We have it. The quality of a graduate depends on the quality of his lecturer, his or her lecturer. What ASU is not telling Nigerians is what government is doing to support Nigerian lecturers to also study abroad. Now the long work to negotiation and compromise is about to be cut short as new academic bodies are rising to question the integrity of ASU politics. The radical approach uh, by, the uh, by the strike veterans in ASU will always want to be alone in the space so as to continue with their attitude of strike. And we now thank God that Konwa is here to salvage the system. I want to urge that Konwa and uh, Nam Namden, now that you are here and you've been given authority, are you on strike? If you are not on strike, why haven't you started the teaching? Yeah. And then let us know your members. And yes. then the things start, the university starts. Because we can't be held up by strike professionals. Academic doyens say enough of the stay of execution order to cut rulings by ASU if Nigerian public universities must be rescued from imminent collapse. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. And still on bringing succor to the people, the All Progressives Congress Presidential Campaign Council is growing daily with the coming on board of various support groups. The Progressive Sisters Network, through a planned sister-to-sister -sister campaign strategy, has given assurance to Nigerians of significant votes for the APC. Sally Hugwanara reports. Deliberate efforts by stakeholders in mainstreaming women into the political arena in Nigeria is no doubt increasing awareness and promoting women participation in politics. Mostly young women under the platform of the Progressive Sisters Network have plans to bring to the fore their numerical strength to the advantage of the APC. No political party in the history of this country has beaten a path to the presidency or indeed any public office without the active support of women we are there for a strong national pillar. our coordinators are mostly young and middle-aged women because we also understand that young people form a very key part of the voting demography but they are not being properly engaged enough and this is a demography that we can secure for the apc and we have everything that it takes we have built a structure across the six geopolitical zones of this country this is the time to pay back the goodness and the kindness shown by APC to citizens with disabilities with our votes and I'm assuring you that women with disability has votes for Tinubu come 2023. We have network across all the poly units across six states and we're using our network, our financial capacity and also our social network to see how we can converse for vote. It was a platform that also set an agenda for the zonal and state coordinators on the techniques of sister to sister campaign in Abuja, Saliu Guanara, NTA News. Sports update is next with Kene Ima Budiki. On that note, we conclude nationwide on NTA with a reminder to stand against rape and rapists. Thanks for watching.